This is Lloyd Chambers at DigiLloyd.com. I want to talk about where to focus. In the other videos I discussed uh, getting accurate focus and some of the issues involved in, like focus shift and field curvature and things like that. But what about where to actually focus? Um, there's an old rule that says for landscape shooting one third in and stop down essentially. I don't use this rule and that's because in most scenes there's some subject matter which is most important, more critical than the rest of it. Sometimes this subject matter is very close and sometimes it's quite distant. And a high-res DSLR, uh, even at f11, if you focus very far off that critical subject matter, it will never get critically sharp, not even at f11. At 36 or 50 megapixels, that's pretty tough. You don't have a real good depth of field for critical sharpness. Um, and what's kind of funny about this whole thing is when depth of field is developed as a concept, it's a very amorphous thing. Uh, in fact, most tables for depth of field assume a 30 micron circle of confusion. That's the size of the dot that the lens makes. Now, 30 microns is 900 square microns. And the size of a pixel on a high-res digital camera these days is somewhere around less than 5 microns. So that's 25 square microns. So 25 square microns versus 900. To say something's acceptably sharp when it's roughly 40 times, 38 times larger in area is, is kind of funny. That's not sharp. That's like making your 50 megapixel camera into a 1.5 megapixel camera. So the depth of field tables are not really the way to go because it, they're not sharp outside in very narrow range. So what I do is I like to emphasize the key, um, the key uh, elements of the subject. Because if you do stop down to F11 or F13, let's say, you're going to pull in those other, the other elements uh, as well as they're going to pull in. But if you just blindly focus one-third in or whatever, chances are in a lot of times you'll do okay, and other, other times the key subject matter will be not quite sharp. A good example of that would be a distant horizon. Um, maybe you have a very interesting flower in the foreground. So are you going to focus on that flower or are you going to focus one-third out? Uh, if the flower is the center of attention, it's probably best to focus right on that flower. Make it tack sharp. Let everything else happen. On the other hand, if there's no particularly interesting foreground, you don't necessarily want knee depth sharp. It's, it's much more interesting to see the open vista and see a tack sharp horizon across the frame as opposed to a kind of soft, mushy horizon. So I target my subject very specifically with focus. And if you're not stopping down, that of course is critical. You can't have something soft. Now here's another example which shows how silly that rule could be. Suppose you're standing there taking my portrait, all right, but you, and there's the background. Are you going to focus one-third in, that is like somewhere behind me, and stop down and hope that I'm in focus? Probably not. You're going to focus on me because for a portrait you want that person, animal, tree, whatever, to be in as sharp as you can make it. Furthermore, you may want some background blur there's not really much choice in the matter. But in any case, there's, n there's no point in a situation like that of focusing b in some average place. Um, and th the other negative side effect of that is, is that there's a visual emphasis that comes from a zone of sharpness, particularly when you make a larger print. So if your visual emphasis is somewhere between those really interesting foreground flowers or rocks and, so and somewhere between the distant, um, beautiful striped cliffs. So it's, well, you've focused on thin air or maybe something that's not interesting at all. So in cases like that, you're generally better off to emphasize that distance or the close-up and let the chips fall where they may. And that's the challenge in focus. Now, and sometimes you have a scene where it, it's just not clear where you should focus. You know you're not going to get it all. You've got strong foreground elements. You've got strong background and mid-zone elements. You'd like them all to be in perfect focus. 
and you don't have a tilt lens with you, uh, in those cases I may use something roughly similar to the one-third in roll, again maybe biasing it a little bit and I'll stop down to say f13. I almost never go to f16 because the quality losses tend happen to everything and, and really degrade it. So there are situations like that, but they're not the, they're not happening all the time. Uh, so uh, think about focus the next time and don't stop down too much. And the last thing I would say is that there's a, in my view, a an uh, undeserved emphasis on sharpness. What I mean by that is. If you're making an image where you want to emphasize a particular subject, a portrait's a particularly good example, you don't necessarily want that background to be fully sharp. You don't necessarily need it to be completely blurred either. You might want context. Where was I? What was, in the, what was happening around me? That context does not need to be sharp. It just needs to be sharp enough to communicate that context. I was in these mountains, or I was in this you know, Times Square, whatever. So you're not going to shoot at f2 and everything goes blurred in the background, uh, just some bright lights that are all smears. Maybe you'll shoot at f5, 6 and you got a nice sharp portrait of somebody or a statue or whatever with enough detail in the background to, to allow recognition of place, time, or whatever. So uh, just stopping down for the sake of uh, more sharpness can actually be self-defeating in terms of making an image that's interesting. And the, the classic example of that is uh, that telephone pole growing out of somebody's head. At a reasonable aperture that pole is fairly blurred out, not really a problem. You go to f11 or f16, suddenly that they've got the telephone pole growing right out of their head. Um, so th these things all are something to consider when you're shooting uh, your, your images, and uh, that's why a fast lens is useful too, because you have more choice over the, the apertures, how much background blur you get, and so on.